Hi folks, my name is Jay Amarillinson and I'm a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG and a specialist in the Eris platform. And today we're going through another one of our videos called Help, I'm an Eris admin, how to support your very first Eris project or instance. Now, we're covering a few different things in this series, particularly on how you might just get started if you're the one responsible for administrating an Eris instance. And one of the things you'll end up probably wanting to do is bring in information from external sources. Now, in a different video, we've talked about the simple import process. But what if you've got a little bit more of a complex data set that you're going to want to bring in that might include a series of attributes, um, it might include you know, connections, might even include hierarchies. Um, how are you going to bring that information in? And so that's going to be focused on our Excel template import. Um, so let's get that. Let's get to covering that today. This is going to require a little bit of knowledge. Um, you're going to, if you haven't watched videos yet um, from from uh, this this source on method configuration um, or method uh, modification, you'll probably want to do that. Um, there is some component here that will that will require that you know the uh, type number of your models, objects, and connections, and where to find that. And we'll show you today, but just being familiar with that is going to be important. So in a previous video, we talked about an example of a simple data set, name and description. Well, what if my data set's a little bit more complex? Um, in this example, I'm bringing a bunch of applications in and I've got their names, descriptions, costs, standardization statuses, you know, timelines, criticality, downtimes, things like that. There's a lot more here to bring in than just a single attribute. And in fact, as I, as I said in a previous video, it sort of pre-selects for the attributes you're allowed. And some of these things would be like drop-down lists or values lists from Eris. Um, so they wouldn't, you wouldn't be allowed to create that through the create objects menu. It's also, um, this, is, this is one example where we don't have a hierarchy, but let's say you were to get an app, a, a list of processes from somebody, um, we can, we can uh, bring that in with all of its hierarchies um, if that's something that you'd like to do. So let's take a look at what that means in Eris. So I'm gonna go over here to Eris Architect where we're gonna to have to spend a little bit of our time to do this Excel template import and export. Um, it is a report from Eris um, and you need to run it. Uh, I was just running it here in, uh, in Eris Architect um, where you're gonna be able to export and import this dynamically. So uh, I'm gonna go over here um, in my demo database because uh, I'm gonna try and do this in my, for my application systems. I wanna import this as a bunch of applications that I can later on use. Uh, and it doesn't matter where you click, the report has a group context and just you know, just kicks out a template for you. You, know, you wanna right click, choose evaluate, um, start report. And you're gonna choose to create that template for data import under you know, all reports, you can just find under C, create template for data import. When you run that report, um, it's gonna kick out something that looks exactly like this. Sort of a blank uh, sheet that lets you do whatever you want along these different tabs. So I'm gonna go through these tabs. Each one's important to know, um, but they're sort of halfway um, content and halfway context, which is kind of how Eris works for everything. On the left side is our content. What are the models and we're gonna be bringing in? And what's the structure and, and sort of drill down of them? Are we, do we have a hierarchy that we are trying to represent here? Um, then in those models, what attributes are we capturing and maintaining? So if you've got attributes maintained about those models, like you know, let's say a page properties um, in the example of Visio, um, you'd, you'd put them here. Similarly, our objects and their attributes. And this is where we're gonna spend, be spending our time today talking through how to bring those attributes in. And then similarly, connections um, between one source and another and their, and their given attributes. And so you're gonna be filling out all these blank boxes and then all these connection type ones or mod type one or uh, symbol type one, object type one, those are gonna be set by the other half, which, are, which is all of our mapping activities. And these are pretty simple. These are just all blank little mappings. But what it's actually doing is it's gonna say, when, when I, whenever you have mod type one written there, you want to look to Eris for this model type based on the type number from the method. So in our example, we're gonna be looking to bring all these applications in, in an application system type diagram. I happen to know that because I've decided that's how I'm gonna represent applications in my repository. Okay, well, what type is that? Oh, well, if you remember from, a, if you've watched the method video or if you've, or if you've paused this and gone back and seen it, you go to Eris and administration, under configuration, method, 
that's where we need to go to get those numbers, those all important numbers. So remember the first one we need to do is go to model because we're trying to figure out which model we're putting in. We're putting in application system type model. So we're gonna go to model and that is going to give us application system type diagram. Follow this over, it's type number 21. Tab back over here to model type one is 21. Okay, so now we, we're, now we wanna do is we wanna say, which objects are we putting on this? Well, we're putting application system type objects because once again, I've decided that that's how I'm gonna represent it in the method. So let's go over here to, uh, to object types and we have application system type, which is type number six. So once again, I'm just gonna go object type number one, six, type that in. Uh, similarly, we can do symbol type. So what, what symbol are we representing this by? So we're representing it by the application system type. Um, as a note for you, for, if you haven't sort of covered in the past, um, one object type can be represented by multiple different types of symbols. You can get down to that. Um, so for instance, as a perfect example, application system type has two different default symbols you could choose from it. One is a little lighter color, one is a little darker color, but you can make any number of new symbols that you wish to, and we can talk about that uh, later. So that's type number 33. So let's do that one over here. And if we were connecting every, anything in together, we are currently not. Um, we were, that, that's something we don't have to worry about. The last is gonna be our attributes. So what are the attributes we're gonna, we're gonna map in? So we're mapping in the description slash definition, that's number one. So let's go over here to our attribute types and map that stuff in. And this is, this is where it takes a little bit more time to do. Um, you wanna make sure all your mapping is done. And note, you can always filter your list down. So I, I type in DSC and I see description slash definition is type number nine. So I'm gonna go back over to my mapping and say type number nine is my first attribute. And what's the next column over here in my application? Data center costs. Okay, let's type over here, data. And we have our data uh, center costs, which is type 114. So I'm gonna go over here, 114. And then next we're looking at our standardization status. And so you can imagine uh, I, I would go through this and I'm not gonna go through the full process here, but standardization status 3137. So just picking all these numbers um, as, as a, a so as a good way of getting things in. Now we're gonna to wanna to bring all of our information in. So let's map all of our objects in here. By the way, this please notes, um, you can uh, choose uh, to just ding, just like that, you don't care about it. Um, these are these are these handy, tri handy tips though. Um, as a note, if you uh, enter both symbol and object, the symbol has priority because obviously symbol um, is the more defining type. It's like the subtype of, uh, of object. So it's gonna overwrite whatever you put as object if you just got it wrong. Um, and uh, this is, uh, it's easier, it's easiest to enter the sheet model structure first. Um, there's a reason why, because you wanna make sure that you have a model that's being created with all these objects on it. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna do that at, at the very beginning, um, but we're, we're, and we're gonna maintain that relationship between um, them. So let's go over here. Now we are gonna do object type one and symbol type one for everything. So I'm just gonna sort of copy and paste that down um, after I've copied my applications in. So I'll select uh, name, attribute one, two, and three, which you've got maintained, these ones right here. And just sort of drag down to the bottom, ding, and paste. So format doesn't really matter, although you can just uh, paste uh, without formatting very values, um, which might be nice to just have this sort of laid out. Um, you don't have to worry about any of the formatting here. I'm just gonna do this so you can see what, what people are doing um, or what's been done. And uh, now I'm gonna copy and paste just the first line. Cause remember we are keeping it in symbol type one, object type one. And I'll paste that all the way down to make sure Eris knows they're all the same type of object. Now we could stop here and just hit the import button. And that's fine, that would work. Um, but the tip that they gave us, which is kind of cool if we go back to model structure, is we can actually create a model automatically with all these objects on it. Mm, okay, that seems good. Objects in column D always create a new model for themselves. So I'm, I'm gonna call this um, application uh, diagram. And on that application diagram, I'm gonna place all of my objects. Let me go back over here, copy, 
and paste these objects one column down. So now all these objects will exist on, on this particular model. And once again, these are model type one, symbol type one, and then connection type one, which we, have, we haven't currently defined a connection. Um, we can do that. So for instance, if, if we want everything to be connected to the application diagram, um, or we can just import it and we'll get, we will get errors, that, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It just means it won't be connected. So I'm gonna save this. Uh, and here is my thing ready to go. Now I'm gonna go back over, I'll, I'll minimize this. I'll go back over to Eris and leave the administration menu. We've used all of our, our sort of administrations up and let's go to the application and then run a report. Now this report is called import data from Excel templates. So I'm gonna go down import data in Excel format and run that report. Now, once again, doesn't really matter. It's just gonna, it's going to automatically create assignments. Always, yes. Um, and we're gonna go over here to our, um, our template we have. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to my documents. Um, you'll see my nice uh, structure over here. Uh, and we're gonna go to our help, my Eris admin and template for data import for importing. Now it's getting important. It will give us some, error, some warnings, that's fine. Um, you don't really care about it. Um, it just means it can't connect some of the things together. Uh, and you can give you a little report about how those, how everything sort of came together. Um, yeah, and I said, you can't, that, that, get their number, that's fine, whatever. All good. We don't really care about that because what did it do? It created an application diagram with all of our objects on it. Isn't that cool? So I double click and open it up. You can see this in one step created what we, it took us a couple steps to do on um, the previous one. Um, and we can see our attributes like data center costs and standardization status. There we are. So our more advanced attributes have been maintained. We're ready to go. And that's, that's the case for all of, uh, all of things we want to have, which is great. So that's, that's awesome. Um, and it makes it very easy for us to, you know, connect things together um, with our existing set of information. So you never have to be very far away. So that's, a, that's how you use a template for data, data import um, to import libraries that have more complicated sets of data to them. Once again, it's just, it's just create template for data import and, and import that data in Excel format. Um, and you just need to use this template um, to do it. And you need to have some basic knowledge of the ARIS method. But once you've got that, it's, uh, it's smooth sailing from there. So once again, thank you so much for your time. I'm Jane Rollinson. Um, hopefully you'll, you've uh, been enjoying the series. If you would like to leave a comment or some feedback or let us know, there's lots of ways of getting in touch with us, but uh, hopefully you're enjoying uh, learning more about being an Eris admin, uh, some of the basic tasks you need to do and how to make your organization successful. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.